Hi Dreamers, welcome back to the world of Tana Dreams. Today I'll be experimenting on 4 free drawing apps available on Windows PC to see which ones I would recommend the most for beginners. A common tip I hear from many professional artists is to start cheap on a free software. You do this to see if you generally like drawing digitally and I personally agree with this tip because you don't want to invest a lot of money into drawing pads and applications only to find out you dislike digital art. So trying a free software is a great first step. Please keep in mind though that these reviews will solely be based off my personal experiences and from what I could conclude from experimenting here. What you want to do is ultimately up to you and you are completely free to experiment yourself on these apps. I'll link a few videos in the description from other great art YouTubers who actually tested these softwares as well and I encourage you to please notice any patterns from us. The four apps I will be experimenting on are Microsoft Paint, Krita, Fire Alpaca, and GIMP. The controls of this experiment are that all will be tested on my Lenovo ThinkPad. Here is a picture of what my setup looks like. All will be of a simple portrait here of my OC character named Husky Dreams. I have little to no experience with any of these apps and I did not look up any tutorials for these apps. I did this so I could test how easy the applications are to navigate and find out for new users. Hey guys, Future Tana Dreams here. I just wanted to provide you with a few receipts to prove that Husker Dreams is indeed my character. So this is my Instagram page. If we click my icon over here, hit profile, it just leads me back here. So this should be proof that um, this is my Instagram account. If we scroll all the way down here, you will see three posts I made of Husker Dreams because I entered him into a contest back last year. I didn't win, but that's okay. So if we click this post here and look at the dates, I posted this post on September 12th of 2020. This was Husker Dreams' big debut, and here's my signature. So let's go ahead and look at this trilogy here. Here's another piece I submitted, and one more. So if that's not a good receipt, I don't know what is. The measures I will mostly be looking for are how user-friendly the layouts are, how effective the tools are, if the applications are reflective of professional digital art programs, think Photoshop, and if the applications could frustrate new artists. The drawing you're seeing on screen is a Photoshop CC 2020 version, which is a paid program. So let's see if these free applications can actually compete with a paid software. The first application I'm doing is the quote unquote infamous Microsoft Paint. I know that Microsoft Paint has a rather negative reputation. It is usually automatically installed when you download Microsoft Office to your PC, so you have a high chance of having it already. And you can actually get very cool results with the right skills. However, from the point of view from someone who's actually painting on Microsoft Paint for the first time, it does require a lot of patience and testing. My first quote unquote red flag was that I have a really tough time adjusting the canvas. I couldn't really make it longer vertically for some reason. There aren't any layers and there are no smoothing or pin pressure tools to make the line art neat or organic. Keep in mind I don't have any screen protectors that can provide friction so I do rely more on smoothing functions for cleaner line art. I tried cleaning it with the eraser tool but that actually made it more pixely. I actually found out this curvy line tool that acts somewhat like the pin tool that got really decent line work but you could only have two anchor points at a time and it was difficult to cut off. You had to switch between tools to make it stop. I was not very happy with the paint bucket tool. They left these nasty spaces of white and I had to go over those with the brush tool or the curvy line tool. The eyedropper tool was pretty decent and accurate. I had to rely a lot on that to get my colors for shading. Off screen, I added highlights and filled the background color. I would say that Microsoft Paint doesn't really give an accurate representation of what to expect from a general drawing applications. You should expect to have pin pressure, smoothing, warp tools, layers, etc. And without these tools, making digital art will be more difficult and could make new users more frustrated, which is the last thing I want.
The next application I'll be experimenting is Krita. Now, I actually had Krita on an old PC of mine, but I used it only once to test the animation functions and animation didn't really work out for me. Therefore, my knowledge of Krita is still very limited and I never tested its illustrative properties. Now, this one was a step in the right direction. It offered an easy way to get your template ready. I could easily find out most of the functions like the wand tool, the layers, the color wheel, and I even found out how to quickly get out the adjustments to stabilize the brush tools. You just click the tools options tab. The brush options are good. As you can see, I got a nice sketchy pencil brush for the sketch layer. I found an ink brush that highly resembled Photoshop's hard round brush. It was a little bumpy though, but I was happy with the tapers and the pin pressure. The shortcuts were a bit different from Photoshop. For example, the fill tool went from G to F and the eyedropper tool went from I to P, so I did have to get used to that. The fill tool was really efficient and it didn't leave many or any crevices of white. The problem was that I couldn't find out how to make the line art layer the reference layer, so I had to copy the line art layer below the original and fill the colors from there. The layering modes worked as expected, especially with multiply. You do have to keep monitoring the opacity though. Whenever I used the brush or the fill tool, I kept forgetting to change the opacities from 80 or 90% to 100%. So I kept making mistakes and had to recolor a lot. And here's how the portrait turned out. And even though the line work is a bit bumpy, I do feel like there's a lot of potential with this software, especially if you invest time to learn it, and it does give a rather good representation of what to expect from digital art applications. The next application will be Fire Alpaca. Let me say right now that I was really excited about this software because the user interface looked great. I could easily find out how to get the smoothing, the pressure sensitivity, and the brush variety looked fantastic. I immediately found a hard round brush and a beautiful pencil sketch brush that was great for the sketch layer. However, I found that the application may not be suitable for Lenovo ThinkPads. Every time I tried to draw using the pen, the application would stop drawing and everything on the canvas would freeze. As you can see here, I'm trying and trying to draw and even change layers, but the whole application would freeze and I had to keep closing and opening a new canvas. So I had to resort to drawing with my mouse and my finger for the sake of getting something on there. I won't disqualify the app though on the basis that I'm not a good mouse dash fingered painter. The smoothing function saved the piece, thank goodness, and if you check the box at the top that says zero pressure on both sides when you have the brush tool out, it leaves a beautiful taper effect even if you draw with a mouse. Aside from the hard time getting the line work neat, I had a hard time zooming in and out. The control plus plus function wasn't working when you tried to zoom in, so I had to go to the view menu and manually change it from there. The other shortcuts were great though. A lot of them were very similar to Photoshop. For example, B was still the brush tool and I was still the eyedropper tool. The fill tool was excellent. There is a little menu at the very top that says expand. Be sure to expand it to at least two pixels and it'll fill everything within the line layer. However, the wand or selection tool was a bit frustrating because it would only select a certain feature and there was no way to add more features to the select, so shading was a bit slowed down. The layer modes worked as expected and I could easily group them together. Here's how the piece ended up. I would say that I can definitely see why this app is popular. It's good for new users, shortcuts were similar to a paid application, and with the right compatibility settings, you can definitely get great pieces. Finally, we have GIMP. This was another app I had high hopes for because it was ranked number one on this website. However, I ran into the same issue I had with Fire Alpaca, as in my Lenovo pin would not work. Nothing would draw and I had to toggle amongst the layers to get the application to move. So again, I had to draw using my mouse and my fingers. However, even if you do take the pin issue out of the equation, 
This app was very confusing. It took me a while to find out how to adjust the brush size and get the smoothing and pressure sensitivity activated. And even after I did that, the lines were still very stiff and were not accounting for pressure sensitivity. With that, the user interface isn't very new user friendly. Just from my screen alone, you can tell that I would have to do a lot of adjusting to get it easier to read and some of the shortcuts weren't even working. For example, the fill bucket tool is Control shift f but I kept getting the eyedropper tool instead. I could navigate the layers, modes, and groupings just fine though. However, the frustrating part was that the layers had a defined size, as in if I moved the layer downward, I would be left with a chunk of unusable space at the top because I met the layer's maximum dimensions. I'm sure there's a way to adjust it, but that would just slow down the process even further. Hey guys, Future Tanner Dreams here again. One thing I forgot to mention in the original recording was that the magic wand tool was absolutely frustrating. I could not for the life of me figure out how to make it stop or deselect. I tried right clicking, none of the options said deselect. I tried hitting escape, that didn't work either. I tried toggling along the other applications, that did not work. So if you see me struggling with the magic wand tool here, that is why. Husker Dreams definitely looked way wonkier here, not only because of the Lenovo pin not working, but because of the lack of pressure sensitivity and the difficulty navigating through the functions. Well everyone, those were my experiments of Microsoft Paint, Krita, Fire Alpaca, and GIMP. Here is my ranking of the softwares with one being my best recommendation for beginner artists and four being my least recommended application. As you can see, Krita is at number one because I found that the interface was very new user friendly, the tools were easy to figure out, it gives a good representation of what you can further expect from a paid application, and the illustrative functions were the least likely to frustrate new users. Now, I will admit this, the application that I used before seriously drawing digitally was Metabank Pro. I used it on an old PC, but unfortunately, my current PC was not compatible with the software, and I couldn't download it so I could experiment on this video, but I remember it being pretty easy to draw with just the mouse alone. The layering and shortcuts were very similar to Photoshop, and you could get some really good effects with some practice. Here are a few pieces I drew a few years ago. They were traced because I was very new to digital art but it was really good practice and as you can see, I got some really good use from it. Credit goes to Konami for these pictures. I still do encourage you to do your own experimenting and to be the judge of which applications you would like to use. However, I don't want your computer's hard drive to overfill. So here's a quick tutorial on how you can easily remove apps you don't want. You open the control panel by just searching it in your taskbar, then go to Programs and click the Uninstall a Program hyperlink. Find the application, right click and select Uninstall. The pop-up prompts may differ between apps but if you want to completely remove the app, just keep hitting yes. Then you're done. Well everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it was helpful for you. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. The world of Tana Dreams is always full of art, creativity, and positivity, and I would love to have you visit again. Have a wonderful rest of your day. May all your sweet dreams come true.